What's going on everybody? This is Joseph from Nerds of Matrimony. Welcome back to Let's Play Ocarina of Time. So in the last episode, we did everything we could in Goron City, and we made our way to the second dungeon of the game, Dodongo's Cavern. So right here in the opening room, you just want to grab one of the bomb flowers on either side, place it down in front of the wall in front of you, this will blow it open, and then the camera will pan in and show you the main room of the dungeon, and the title of the dungeon, Dodongo's Cavern. So, right off the bat you want to run forward and you'll encounter a new enemy here known as a Beemos. Basically it has a rotating eye, and if it sees you, it'll shoot a laser beam at you and it will follow you around until you run away from it. Um, we cannot do anything about these guys yet. Um, well, we can, but we can't do anything about this one in the middle just yet. Um, but, you know, we'll have the means to deal with him later. So anyways, you want to come over here on the left, grab this bomb flower, and put it up against this wall over here. This will blow it open and reveal a large chest that contains the dungeon map. Um, so I just want to take this time to explain what's going on with this video. Um, you may notice by the sound that I'm actually doing post-commentary. Um, I made the decision to do all of the dungeon videos from this point forward as more walkthrough type based videos. So because of that we're going to be doing post-commentary. The reason for that is because, um, you know, the dungeons are a big part of Zelda games and I want to be able to help people out with them. Um, so I want them to be more walkthrough based. Plus, not to mention, when you're going through these dungeons, there are a lot of enemies and there's all these puzzles to go through. So it's kind of hard for me to talk and play at the same time. So yeah, that is why it's just me doing post-commentary. All the other videos during the game, all the in-between dungeon videos, we will be doing live commentary uh, with me and Christy. But yeah, for the dungeon videos, it's just going to be myself doing post-commentary. So anyways, uh, on the other side of the room, you can blow open this wall that's in the back corner here uh, to reveal a gossip stone. We saw one of those in the second forest meadow. Basically you can hit them with your sword and they will tell you what time it is. So yeah. Anyways, when it comes to the Beemos, the only way to destroy them is by using a bomb flower. So you can just throw one at it and it will just explode right away. So there you go. Um, if you do not connect with it, because that one right there, what happened is the bomb flower actually landed on the Beemos. If that happens, it'll blow up right away. If not, like if the explosion happens next to the Beemos, um, it will shut its eye for a brief moment, but then it'll open it again. So anyways, now we're here in this new room, and there's a new enemy in here, and these are called Baby Dodongos. Basically, they will just chase after you, and if they hit you, they will damage you. Um, however, as you can see, you can kill them in one sword slash, and then they will fall over and explode, because why not? So yeah. You don't really have to fight them though, you can just run past them. So anyways, up here is a puzzle of sorts. You'll notice there's a blue switch on the ground. You step on it, and it'll open the bars on the door. However, if you step off the switch, the bars are back on the door. So the question becomes, well, how can we keep the switch down? This is actually a classic Zelda puzzle. Basically what we need to do is we need to move one of these statues onto the switch, keep the switch down, and that'll keep the bars from going back on the door. So yeah. And there we go. Perfect. Alright, so in this next hallway, there are going to be two keys on the wall. Remember, the keys are just the bats. Uh, so you just want to shoot them with your slingshot and take them out from the range. So they do not come off the wall and attack you. Alright, so in this next room, we are going to encounter um, the sort of kind of mini boss of this dungeon. Um, we're actually going to be fighting two sets of these guys, but these guys are called Lizalfos. They're basically lizard, dinosaur-like creatures. Um, they're very easy to fight. Basically, they will um, come at you one at a time, and they will try to slap, uh, slash at you with, your, with their sword. Basically, you just want to um, hold the shield button down, let them hit your shield, and then immediately follow with an attack, and then just rinse and repeat. Once you've hit one three times, it'll run away, and its buddy will come over and try and attack you. Once you hit that one three times, the other one will come back. It takes six hits to beat them with your Kokiri sword. So yeah. Anyways, I'm going to take this time to ask you guys, how has your Christmas break been? Um, we go back to school on Monday. Today's Saturday. Um, you know, we've, en we've enjoyed our break. We spent some time with both of our families. Um, and then... Uh, 
we've been just taking this week off and just being lazy. Um, I was actually planning on recording all throughout this week, but uh, I actually decided to get back into playing Dark Souls. Um, I've been playing a crap ton of Dark Souls this week. Um, I've clocked in probably about 35 hours of Dark Souls this week. So yeah, I decided to make a new character and play through the game as a sorcerer, and holy crap, that game is so much easier when you play as a sorcerer. It's still really hard, but it makes it a lot easier. Anyways, in this next room, we're going to encounter another enemy. This is just known as a regular Dodongo. Basically, when they see you, they will breathe fire at you. However, it takes them a while to breathe fire. So during that time, you can circle around and hit their tail. This is the only point on their body that you can actually attack. You cannot attack their face because it won't do anything. But basically, you hit their tail four times and then they will explode and die. Wahahaha. <laughs> so there are three Dodongos in this room. You're going to want to kill all three of them before you proceed through this room because otherwise, they're going to give you some trouble, as you're going to see. But yeah, I've been playing a ton of Dark Souls this week. Um, I'm probably going to play some more today. Um, but yeah, I've been having a really good time playing that game. Um, I'm eventually going to do a Let's Play of that game, but that's not going to be for a long time. Because I want to, you know, get at least decent at the game before I do a Let's Play of it. I mean, I'm still probably going to die tons in the Let's Play. But at least I can not die as much as I normally would. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, so this is the last Dongo. Once we take him out, all the enemies in this room will have been defeated. But you will notice that the bars on the door do not go away. That is because we actually have to light all the torches in this room. And this is why you want to kill the Dongos, because if you don't kill the Dongos, when you go try to light the torches, they're going to try to breathe fire on you and cause you a lot of trouble. So all the torches are on the right side of the room. You just want to light your Deku stick and just run straight along the path and you'll run into all three of them. This is really not that difficult. And there we go. Yay! So once again I'm going to pull out my sword and put away my Deku stick before it burns and go through this door. So now we're actually back on the main room. We're going to hit this switch right here. This is going to open up a door for us on the other side of the room. Yay! Also, yes, that giant thing in the middle of the room that is a dead Dodongo's skull, basically. Giant Dodongo. Yeah, this can be really annoying. Sometimes you can land on these platforms as they're going down and you have to wait a really long time. By the way, you can fall in the lava below. It will not instantly kill you. However, it will drain your health over time, but you should be fast enough to get out of it. If you just roll through it, you will be fast enough to get out of it. So anyways, in this room, there's a giant staircase followed by, a, uh, surrounded by a whole bunch of bomb flowers. We're not going to worry about that right now. Right now, you want to come over here and blow up in this wall with the bomb flower. And this will take you into a new room. Now, in this, in, in this room, we're going to face off with a new enemy. I don't exactly remember what they're called. Um, we're going to see more of them later on in the game. And I will have their name by that point. But basically, in order to defeat these guys, um, well, basically, they're, they're kind of like fake statues, as you can see here. If you touch one of them, or throw something at them, they will come to life and start chasing after you. So here's how you have to beat these guys. At this point in the game, it's kind of hard, um, because you have to use the bomb flowers. Basically, you have to wake it up, and then while it's awake, you have to hit it with another bomb flower, or get it to, you know, stand near one when it explodes. That is the only way you can beat these guys. As you can see, you cannot hit them with any of your weapons. Even if you hit them in the back, it will not work. So, yeah. And we have to beat this guy to get out of this room because, as you can see, there are bars in the door. So, yeah. So, I tried throwing a bomb at him here, and it didn't really quite work out. So, I decided to go after the other bomb because I knew that one was going to wake him up. Unfortunately, he ran away too far from this one, and the explosion didn't quite get him. These guys really aren't much of a threat. I mean, they don't really move around all that fast. So, yeah. I tried to throw that one there for whatever reason. Sometimes the controls on the bomb flowers can be a bit finicky. Um, you know, because you have to be running in order to throw it. Sometimes you will think that you're running, and then it'll just drop it in front of you. 
So once you've blown it up, it'll start moving around towards you really fast. You just want to back away from it, and eventually it'll explode, and there we go. So now we're going to open this large chest in this room to get the compass. Once again, the compass shows you where all the treasure chests are in the dungeon. Yay! Alright, so back out in this room, uh, we have to lower this staircase because it's a bit too high for us. So to do that, you want to grab this lone bomb flower over here and put it right in the middle of the two rows of bomb flowers that are surrounding the staircase. Now you'll notice when I put the bomb flowers down, um, I'm actually using the shield button. That's actually a really good strategy. Because um, normally you have to wait until the A button icon says to drop it. But really, you can actually drop it really quick if you just push the shield button. So push the R trigger, and Link will pull out his shield, and this will cause him to drop the bomb right where he's standing. That's actually a really useful strategy, and we're actually going to be using that later on in the game. So now you just want to climb up this staircase, and yes, it does take a while. By the way, you probably hear a gold scotula. There's a cubby hole above me. We cannot get there yet. We're actually going to have to come back to this dungeon later to get that gold scotula that is in that cubby hole. See, it's right over there. However, there is another one on these vines right here, but we need to destroy this skull wall tula first, because if we try to climb up after the token, he's going to come after us. So there we go. There are only, there are only um, four gold Skotulas in this dungeon. We're going to be getting two of them. We're going to have to come back for the other two. So yeah. The other one we actually already passed. Um, it's in a secret area that we cannot get to yet. We have to learn the specific song later on in the game. Anyways, in this room, we actually face off with a new variation of the keys. These are called fire keys. Obviously, if they hit you they will burn you for extra damage. Now, you can see all these statues surrounding this platform here. The only one that is actually a real statue is the one in front of the ladder. Do not touch any of the other ones because they are fake and they will come after you. So just move the one in front of the ladder and there you go. By the way, if you ever get caught on fire in this game, rolling will put out the fire immediately. So, yeah. Alright, so now we're actually back in the main room, but we're on the upper level. We're on the second floor, across from the giant dead Dodongo skull. So now we're just going to run across this bridge and go to the other side of the dungeon, on the upper floor, on the second floor. Now in this room, uh, Navi is actually going to give you some good advice for once. Holy crap, it's a miracle. So basically she tells you, you know, when you're in a narrow hallway like this, it can kind of be hard to see what's around the corner. So if you face the uh, corner and use L targeting, you can see what's coming. And this is useful because there are enemies in this room known as blade traps, like these guys. Basically if you try to walk forward, they will hit you and stun you, and you can easily get stun locked there and just die. However, they only do a quarter heart of damage, and as you can see, you have invincibility frames, so you can just run right past them. So anyways, you want to get to the other side of the room, pull this block out, and then um, where the block used to be in the wall, there is a heart. So if you got damaged by the blade traps, you can just use that to recover your health. So once you get up on this platform, there's a small chest up here that contains a red ruby, which is worth 20. Yay, we're rich! Alright, so now we actually want to throw this bomb flower over to that wall over there. This can actually be a pretty difficult throw to make. The only reason I get it on the first try is because, once again, I've played this game a lot. Um, basically, it helps if you stand next to the treasure chest and you can run forward a little bit and throw it. So in this next room, you just want to shoot the eye switch on the other side of the wall. This will make the flames go away and then you can proceed forward. So in this hallway, this really long hallway, you're going to be attacked by more baby Dodongos. And, uh, yeah, once again, you can kill them or you can just run past them. I just chose to run past them. So in this room, we're going to be fighting two more less alphos. And, uh, the strategy is basically the same as before. Let them attack you, follow it with an attack, rinse and repeat. So, yeah. So, uh, where did you guys go for Christmas? Did you stay home? Did you go anywhere? Did you spend time with family? What did you get for Christmas? I actually got some pretty good stuff, um... I got a, uh, like a Da Vinci flying pendulum clock. Um, it was one of those things that you have to, like, build on your own. Well, they have instructions, but yeah. Um, so that was pretty cool. I got a, uh, 
like one of those really thin uh, hoodies from my dad. It was a Steelers hoodie. Um, and it's got like a stripe design on the sleeves. It looks really cool. Um, my dad and I actually went and watched the uh, Texas Bowl um, last week on the 27th. We actually went to the game and watched Texas beat Missouri. So uh, that was a lot of fun. My dad and I are big Longhorn one fans. So that was a nice night for us at NRG Stadium in Houston. Anyway, so now that these guys are dead, I'm going to show you something that's actually kind of interesting. If you come over here to the other side of the room and walk onto this platform right here, you'll notice we're actually above the room where we fought the original two Los Alphos. Look at that. It's all connected. Alright, so now we just want to go into this next room here, and uh, we're actually going to be on a different side of the room we were just in. Well, not yet. In this room, you want to shoot the eye switch on the opposite wall. This will create the. F this will make the first flame go away. There's actually two flames in this room. I'm trying to pull a fast one on here. So when you get on this first platform, you want to turn to the left, and there's an another eye switch in the wall. You want to hit that one. That'll make the second fire go out, and you can proceed forward. So now, like I said, we were actually in the room we were previously with the blade traps, but now we're on an upper level. So you want to run across here and open up this large chest to get the dungeon item. And it is... A bag full of bombs! The perfect thing to give to a kid. Exactly. <laughs> Seriously, who thought this was a good idea to give Link explosives? Oh well. So uh, now we don't actually have to use the bomb flowers anymore because we have our own bombs. So yay! Alright, so that is it for this episode. I um, hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys found it useful. Next time on Let's Play Ocarina of Time, we will go through the rest of Dongo's Cavern. This is Joseph Nerds of Matrimony saying thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.